years of three times a day prayer. And in that place, he cries out, God, we've sinned. Oh God, we can't do anything without you. Oh Lord, hear from heaven. Oh Lord, listen. Oh Lord, act. He calls on the name of the Lord and humbles himself. He owns it. This is key. Teaching the end times, teaching prophecy. You have to own it as your people's sins and not just point the finger at others. Okay, so while he's doing this, it says in verse 20, while I was speaking, praying, confessing my sin, the sin of my people, presenting my supplication for the Lord, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, this is a lot of times where we think angels have wings, but it's not automatic that an angel has wings just because he flies. He's flying in the spiritual realm, not necessarily that you need wings. He reached me about the time of the evening offering. And he informed me, Daniel, I come forth to give you skill to understand. At the beginning of your supplications, the command went out. And I have come to tell you from your great that for you are greatly beloved. Therefore, consider the matter. Now, I won't go into the whole interchange. I teach this in prophecy classes, how significant this greeting is, how profound it is what this angel is saying, that he's calling Daniel greatly beloved is huge. That is so significant. And I want to tell you, if an angel ever calls you highly beloved, it's going to feel really good. <laughs> Just know that. That sense of confiding coming from God. Because I love you so much, Daniel, here's what I'm going to tell you. And then this prophecy. And it's basically this. Seventy weeks are going to occur. Broken down into 62 weeks then and 49 weeks in one week. Okay? Now the word weeks used here is the word for sevens. And most interpret this sevens as 70 seven year time periods. times seven is what? Thank you. Forty-nine times no, it's not forty-nine times seven. Hold it. I got the numbers wrong. Sixty-two weeks and then it's seven weeks which is forty-nine. Sorry, I was already doing the math. So you have seven weeks, 62 weeks, which the seven weeks equals seven times seven is 49 years. And then the last seven years. So I'm not going into all of this right now. But there are marker points about when the seasons will begin. Now the reason that they are gapped, broken down, is because they're not concurrent. I mean, this happens, this happens, this happens with years in between them. Okay? So these years in between them between, actually it's the 49, then the 434, and then the 7, these gaps in between are where we need discernment because it's not as simple as doing the math. And this is so key in what God's trying to instruct when he says no one knows the day or the hour, that these numbers that are there 
are carrying a definition in the spirit and specifically in this case the, the, the separation of these numbers is revealing gaps in the normal earthly time chronology all that to say the first one is the building of the temple the second one is the Messiah coming you can do the math from for instance from Nehemiah to Christ being born is about 434 years. Okay, so again, diff different people have different perspectives on what the historic event does that launches each of these. But what you're getting to is the restoration of the temple, the coming of the Messiah, and then the Messiah being caught off, cut off. Or we would say is crucified. Okay? The Messiah is cut off, it says in verse 26, but not for himself. And the people of the prince, in the middle of verse 26, who is to come, this prince who is to come is the Antichrist. Okay? The people of this prince who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary shall end it with a flood till the end of the war of desolations is determined. Then he, the Antichrist, verse 27, shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. Okay? This Antichrist is going to launch concurrent to the tribulation a covenant with Israel seven years halfway through that he'll break that covenant and the way he breaks that covenant is what is called the abomination of desolation he will come and, and enter into the holy of holies Perception is he will sit on the mercy seat in the Holy of Holies and he will proclaim himself to be God. He will, he will come, in essence, in fair fan, fanfare and like the triumphal entry of Christ, would go all the way into the Holy of Holies. Christ never entered the temple building. He could not. He was, he was, a, he was from the tribe of Judah, not Levi. <clears throat> He could not enter the temple building. Jesus taught in the outer courts. That was not his priesthood to enter that. But the Antichrist will enter that, proclaim himself to be God. Now, if that were to happen today, you know, there'd be thousands of Jews stoning him. There would be all kinds of, you know, there would be, you know, Muslims, if that happened today, resisting him. I mean, that, that couldn't happen today. But what leads up to that is an Antichrist coming as a man of peace, performing signs and wonders, and bringing peace to the nations that are enraged and making a peace covenant with Israel in the midst of it, okay? And the buy-in will be big. There'll be Jews, there'll be Christians, not followers of Christ, but Christians buying in. And, you know, it's, you know, Paul says the elect, even if it were possible, can even deceive the elect if that were possible. And of course, he's talking about the, the contradiction of terms of what the elect means versus someone being deceived. So deceitful in his goodness. Okay? So while this evil leader emerges and he's wicked, he's undercover wicked, when it comes to this time, before as these birth pangs are going on, wars, rumors of wars, cataclysms, difficulties, the nations are going to cry out for someone to bring peace into the sea. It's going to get so bad. We're seeing little pockets of this in the earth, some of that in our nation, in, in America, where 
we just want somebody who's going to fix this thing because it's messed up. It's so convoluted that the fixing is not as simple as building a wall. It's not that simple. And it, it requires, from God's perspective, to help our nation. His people called by His name, humbling themselves. We're expecting an unbeliever to humble himself. Okay, so, the seven-year time period. Just the language here, because it's the language Jesus uses in telling about the end times. It says, then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offer. When the building of the temple, the temple is reestablished. That temple that's reestablished will begin to continue again the sacrifices and the blood sacrifices and there's much preparation going on in Israel right now for the rebuilding of the temple and the blood sacrifices but I want to tell you the climax of that is the Antichrist coming and sitting there. so I don't know about you I don't feel led to donate to that I just sorry um, I don't, we don't need another museum. And, and so this, this temple that's being done here is an antichrist or a counterfeit to the true temple. It's going to be built. It'll be a peace treaty between the antichrist and Israel. That's why I say the end times is about Israel. Understand that. And then that peace treaty or covenant is broken at the three and a half year point. Okay? When that Antichrist sits on the, the throne or the mercy seat, that's what is called here in Daniel 9.27, on the wing of the abomination shall be one who makes desolate. And that's where we get the phrase, the abomination of desolation. When that happens, the desolation will happen. And, and this antichrist man will cause it. Now, that makes the identity of the antichrist, it's possible that it would be a church man. He is certainly one who's blending the religions together to come into peace. You can't simply blend the nations politically and come into a true peace agreement. You have to blend the religions because some nations are categorically tied to their religion. There's not a separation between the church and state in, the, in, in many nations. For instance, in Iran, the Iranian leadership is a religious leadership that leads that nation. It's the only Islam clergy-led nation is Iran. Okay? So the idea that you can bring nations together is bringing the religions together. And this Antichrist will bring the religions and the politics and the economics into one system. If you look at the way God ordained and intended the temple, it's to reveal that the government of God, the worship of God, and the, the, the national treasury of God was all in the same system, the same structure, the temple. So what the Antichrist is counterfeiting is the true pattern of the temple. Okay? In that way. Much of the secular society that we grow up in believes in the separation of these three things. The political, the economic, and the religious. But if you do a simple little research, you'll find out that they're not separated. You grew up in Babylon. They are not separated. But the powers the highest levels are religious. They're engaging 
thoughts. That the economics is tied to the religious is tied. It all seems to be separated down the level of certain places, but it's not. And one of the beauties, I believe, of this hour is God is humbling the economies to give us a revelation of how they're tied together and how they're tied to religion, how they're tied to a system that behind the scenes is anti-Christ. In other words, everyone I talk to in the, in the economic world, bankers and this kind of thing, which I've met with, bankers, high institutional bankers, Christians in those banking institutions, they say the present economic global system is coming down. It's breaking and they have no fix for it. And I say, now you know that the next system is going to be designed by some group of people, right? They say, yeah. I say, and you know, they're not on their knees right now saying, Jesus, please show us how to do the next system, right? They say, yeah. They say, so the next system is against Jesus. It's anti-Christ. You know, yeah, absolutely it is. What's coming? Globally, economically, in this hour is an antichrist economics. That's what's coming. That's a precursor. That doesn't launch this, but that happens, I believe, these systems that are, are newly developed that integrate the religions, the politics, and the economics behind the scenes ultimately manifest when this man of peace shows up and makes this covenant with Israel. So I just want to stop and pray. But I pray that you would help us. Help us to understand. Help us to be the people of understanding of the times and the seasons. Thank you. 